So today we're talking about logarithmic functions. <clears throat> and logarithmic functions are the inverse of exponential functions. They're inverse functions of each other. So first let's define what a logarithmic function is. So we're going to let a equal uh, a positive number is a positive number. Let's just do it this way. Is a positive number. not equal to 1. So in other words, a cannot equal 1. I'll explain why that is the case. Additionally, it's fixed, which means it does not change. Because it's not a coefficient, it's going to be the base of our function. Pretty much the same thing we did over on uh, when we were discussing exponential functions. So we have this a, and the logarithmic, logarithmic function with base a is defined to be the inverse of the exponential function with base a, and it's denoted log or log base a of x. In symbols, it would be written down as a function in this manner. So since a logarithm is defined relative to uh, the exponential function, we'll use that in its definition. And we'll say that I have this function that has a base a raised to the x. Then its inverse function is the logarithm of base a of that exponent x. And so this is what a logarithm is. And note that it's based on what this was, what we just got finished going through, and hopefully we've gotten through some practice and some problems as well. Uh, from this idea, we can go back and forth from exponential form to logarithmic form. And I'll write those two down. It's probably the most base thing that you need to remember the most basic thing that you need to remember uh, when we're talking about logarithms. So notice I switched the x and y, but we know that that happens because we switch the x and y and write it as a logarithm. So we get that, or we get y equals logarithm a of x. So <clears throat> there are a number of different things on the internet, uh, and some instructors here teach them. I just, I'm sorry, I just don't know them. I know the following. This is my base. That's my base of my logarithm. I think of it this way. The whole purpose of a logarithm, there are many purposes, but one of the main, 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 main purposes is it's very difficult to think about what this number is going to be if I had this 17 equals 5 raised to the y. What the heck number would this have to be if I was trying to, quote, solve it? So what the logarithm does for us is it, it solves for y. It gets y all by itself. So this is the thing that's a pain in the butt. That's the thing I want to be by itself, no matter what letter it is. And so when I go from exponential form to logarithmic form, it's going to be y equals, and now I'm going to take the logarithm of base a of this number over here, the 17, which is x. So in other words, directly, this would look like y equals log base 5 of the number 17 which in fact you can use a calculator. There's another step that you'd have to use since that's base five, but you could use a calculator to determine what that value is. As opposed to if it was in this form, you're sticking a number in, checking it, sticking a number in, checking it, sticking a number in, it's guess and check. So that's how I remember to go back and forth. So again, it's uh, x equals a to the y, and I go to this is the thing that's a pain, I want it to be by itself, and I use the logarithm to do that and take the logarithm of x. If you're in this situation, y equals logarithm a base a of x, this was the thing that was a pain, so that's going to be my exponent, that's my base, and that's going to be equal to what's left, x. So going back and forth. You're going to need to be able to do that with some uh, efficiency. <clears throat> now, the reason why a is not going to be equal to 1 is kind of the same idea as it was before. When a is equal to 1, it's not very useful, it's not very interesting, and it doesn't, the, the function doesn't behave like a logarithmic function. So that's why we get rid of that a is equal to 1 thing, when the base is equal to 1. Again, like in exponentials, it's sort of useless, not interesting. And so I wanted to really kind of jump over and show you a number of things um, and it's easiest, I think, if I talk about them when the only part, hard part is I can't write on it. But let's talk about it in Desmos. 
um, and there's Desmos. And I have some functions drawn up here. So the red function is y equals x. So let's turn a bunch of these off. I can't use the pen, can I? Where's the pen doing? Can I write on there? No. Uh, and let's turn off all these points too. We'll talk about those later. So I have this, and it's not really turning them off. Oh, it turned off the points, but not the labels. That's a pain. Okay, Wait, one more label to turn off. There we go. So I have this line drawn. That's the function y equals x. As you can see, I made it a dotted line because I'm learning how to use Desmos better. <clears throat> that line is the line which a function reflects about when we're trying to find its inverse. So graphically, uh, y equals x is the line of reflection from, an, from a function to the inverse of that same function. So I'm going to now paint the uh, exponential function. This one is an exponential decline. And if I drag a equals uh, the a, the base, remember if it's less than 1, it's declining or decreasing or whatnot. If I in go past 1 and it's greater than 1, it's going to be an increasing function. Okay. So remember that. Remember with the exponential function, we have these uh, what I called anchor points, but these points that are always part of the graph. The first one is that one, 0, 1. And we'll show the label is 0, 1. I don't know what just happened there. OK. The, I jumped inside that other function. I just wanted to turn on the label. OK. So I turned on the label on 0, 1, right? I'm going to turn the label on for 1 comma 0, uh, excuse me, 1 comma a as well, and show the label. And I'm going to turn the, po turn the point on for, not that one, that guy as well, and turn on its label. Those are the anchor points. Why is that one? Oh, because uh, a is, one point, is 0 0.07, and it's inverse is 1.429. Okay. If I just make it one half, we'll start seeing twos, right? And that's what I think I had before. Come on, just stick it in. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. So there it's half, and one divided by one half is two. And so those are a little bit easier to see than crossing our eyes about the other numbers. So that is our exponential function. Now let's take a look at the logarithmic function. And so we'll turn that one on. And so notice it is, in fact, a reflection. Um, all of these points on the left-hand side of the dotted line y equals x are reflected. If I folded that paper in half, it would become the lower green curve on the right-hand side of y equals x. And the right-hand side blue folds up and becomes this green that's sliding up along the y-axis right next to it. So they are reflections of each other if I fold the paper right on that dotted red line. So now let's add the anchor points. Instead of 0, 1, an anchor point for a logarithmic function is going to be switch x and y, right? Remember inverse functions? The first thing we do is change f of x to y and then switch x and y. Well, that just means the points are going to change and swap positions as well. So instead of 0, 1, I'm going to have 1, 0. It's that guy right there. And notice how if I draw a line from 1, 0 to 0, 1, it will be perpendicular to the red dotted line. That's another aspect of reflected points. Or reflect, yeah, reflected points, that's enough. Okay, uh, the other anchor point instead of being one comma a is going to be a comma one, and so I'm going to turn that guy on, and show its label, and notice again it's still draw a line, draw a segment between those two points, and you get a perpendicular relationship with y equals x. And the third point in the blue exponential function it's negative one comma two, and over here it's going to be two comma negative one. Okay, so. So the logarithmic function is exactly the same as, as the exponential function in many, many respects, except all the x's are switched with all the y's. Now, if we take a look at these two functions, when we uh, are increasing on the exponential function, watch what the logarithmic function looks like. They switch positions. And it looks kind of like that. I mean, they could certainly overlap. There's nothing wrong with these guys here. but. It's just a little easier to see when they're not crossing over each other. So this, uh, notice that the logarithmic function, let's, st let's step back. Recall that the exponential function has a domain that goes from negative infinity to infinity. So all the values for x 
on the uh, x-axis are available for that function. They're defined for that function. But in doing so, we, we then restrict the range because the nature of the function, again, barring any, any horizontal or vertical shifts, the vertical part or the y portion, the values available for the range of an exponential function is greater than zero, okay? So now since we switch the x and y, guess what's gonna happen to our domain of our logarithmic function? So let's turn off the blue one. The domain of our logarithmic function is now x is greater than equal, greater than zero. x is greater than zero. And the range is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity because all the y values for y are mapped to points on the logarithmic function, okay? And that happens whether that's an increasing function or a decreasing function, okay? Range is all real numbers, domain is greater than zero, okay? So that's really all I have for logarithmic function. I would suggest that maybe you, unless you're picking it up while reading the text, um, if you go look at the definition sheet, you can go in and see some other things. Um, I'll go over a couple topics now, but there are some uh, definitions regarding pH, Richter scale, and um, the decibel scale for sound because they're based on logarithms and they'll show up in your word problems. So you may want to go and look at those definitions. I won't go over here. Or you could Google Richter scale, decibel scale, or pH. I'm sure somebody will, you'll find a video that'll explain them and, and give you equations. Uh, or you can just dig in when you're doing the problems. But I'll talk about one other thing here about bases. So let's look at, uh, let's go back to notability. So when I have a logarithm, I can have all kinds of bases here. So log base five of 17 is equal to some value, right? I could have log base 10 of five is equal to some value. When it's log base 10, because it's so commonly used, us lazy mathematicians, we'd stop writing the 10. Just like the square root of two, uh, the square root of four, we don't write this two anymore, we write square root of four or square root of 15 or square root of 64 or whatever we wanna write. We don't write the two. If we don't write it, it's assumed to be a two. If it's not a two, we write the cube root of 56 or whatever. So the same thing here, lazy or efficient, however you wanna phrase it, when it's base 10, we don't write 10 anymore. We just write log five equals y, okay? We stop writing the 10 if, it's a, it's, uh, if it is in fact 10. And some people will write log when they mean e as well, it depends. Um, typically when the base is e, and we're talking about e, which is a, a constant that we already talked about uh, in the exponential function video, e equaling 2.71 blah, 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 if the logarithm is base e, or in other words, if it's the inverse function of this, f of x equals e to the x, the log, the inverse function of that would be f of negative one to, of x is equal to the natural log, we would say log base e of, of y, because that was gonna be, this would have been this guy, right? Thing you get along or we don't write this log base e. It would be true, it'd be fine, and if you wrote that on a piece of paper, it'd be fine, but the computer, and I, you're just not gonna see it that way. Typically, you're gonna see it this way, ln, and, or on your calculators, they use capital L, capital N, which I find odd, but um, ln meaning natural log, because that uh, is the natural constant, natural number, etc. It's also called the natural logarithm, and the log base 10 is often called the common logarithm, but neither here nor there. You just need to know how to interpret what's being written. So there's gonna be a second video on uh, the properties of logarithms, and so we'll go over that. So we'll stop this guy now so it's not too, too long. All right, thanks much, bye.